A life without temptation would be fantastic. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could improvise through each day while always acting morally? That's not how the world works. In the end, we make errors or do things that we later come to regret. In theory, Stoicism is a philosophy. In actuality, it is a set of guidelines for living. The Stoics established rules to guide us in the right direction because they thought life was difficult and full of challenges that would test us. I'm going to discuss 11 historical guidelines that I made for myself in this video to help me become the best version of myself. Over 2,000 years ago, the Stoic philosophers devised these 11 laws, which have shown to be beneficial to numerous individuals throughout history. So, I encourage you to stick around until the end to understand all the principles so you may put them into practice in your daily life. Before we get started, I advise you to activate the bell and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss any videos. Rule number one, master the mornings. A conversation Marcus Aurelius had with himself at the start of book five of his meditations is one of its greatest parts. Although he is aware that he must leave his comfortable bed, he is terribly tempted to do so. It is not only amazing, but also simple to understand. Marcus Aurelius wasn't have to do anything. He wasn't even had to get out of bed. Many emperors before him had handed over responsibility for running the country in order to concentrate completely on living a life of luxury. Marcus Aurelius, knowing that winning the morning was the key to winning the day and succeeding in life, forced himself to resist these temptations and complete his work extremely early in the morning. He may not have heard the saying, the early bird gets the worm, but he was well aware that a day that got off to a good start would be fruitful. In order to have a productive morning, I personally do the following three things. Create a journal entry. As soon as I get up, I prepare a list of everything I need to get done that day. I also write a brief reflection on the previous day, listing both the good and the negative to help me realize what has to be improved I may establish a morning routine and reflect on my life via journaling. It serves as a reminder of my responsibilities and how I should behave. Play a sport. Sports don't have to be extremely intense. Playing sports simply refers to engaging in physical activity of any kind, such as walking, working out at the gym, running, etc. You'll be awakened by it, and you'll feel more at ease and prepared for the third action, the task at hand. When I have completed the first two tasks, I am prepared to concentrate on the current assignment. Rule two is to concentrate on what you can control. Focusing on what we can control and letting go of what we cannot is a core principle of the Stoic philosophy. By realizing this, you will become much more pragmatic and spend less time worrying about unimportant matters. Once you comprehend this, you'll be able to steer clear of many aggravating circumstances and recognize what needs your attention in order to reach your personal objectives. Sports provide a great illustration of this concept. You control how you play, but you have no influence over whether you win, your opponent is respectful, or the crowd supports you. When you accept this and begin concentrating on your game rather than others, you'll probably play better. Utilize the same approach in all aspects of your life. Rule 3. Don't suffer because of unreal issues. Uncertainty in life will lead to negative thoughts that will harm us. This is very normal, yet if we stop to think about it, most of the bad things we foresee happening never do. Seneca said that we suffer more from our imagination than from reality and that we are more afraid than harmed. Keep your attention on the now and be calm. There's a good chance that you won't actually experience the negative outcome you fear will occur. Fourth rule, treat both success and failure equally. Marcus Aurelius used a clever metaphor. He compared all people to a rock, saying, he neither gains anything by rising up nor loses anything going down. The rock still looks the same. You are the same person whether the day begins with a promotion or concludes with a dismissal. In actuality, 
Unfavorable life circumstances typically teach us many lessons, making them even more beneficial than positive circumstances, no matter what occurs. Whether Rule 5. Limit your activities to one per day. You shouldn't take this guideline literally. Doing one thing every day refers to two different circumstances. The first is for those without goals. It's critical to concentrate on achieving one goal every day, no matter how minor. Without goals, a life that may be spectacular becomes routine. The second is for those with several objectives. It's okay to have lofty goals, as long as you keep your attention on one step at a time. Too much simultaneous focus can cause you to lose sight of what is truly important. I encourage you to try to accomplish at least one objective you set for yourself each day using this rule. No matter how simple or difficult the goal may be, work toward achieving it. Sixth rule, avoid seeking the simplest path. Always keep in mind that there isn't a simple way to do anything. Things worth having in life are earned through work. Read the biographies of any successful people you can think of. You'll realize that somebody has worked hard and been disciplined to attain everything they have. In actuality, that is the secret of their success. Difficult roads help you develop your character. They force you to learn from your errors and motivate you to keep going. Your capacity for work and sacrifice will determine whether you attain great goals or not. Since anyone can take the simple route, very few people consistently succeed in their goals. Rule 7. Determine whether it is essential. Think back for a moment on your actions in life. Consider whether what you are doing is required. You'll become aware of how much time we squander on things that don't actually benefit us and how many things we do and want that are completely unnecessary. How can we determine whether what we do is required? Why do you do the things that you do? Find a worthwhile justification for your actions. If you can't uncover that important justification, all you do is unnecessary. Rule 8 is to embrace your fate. It's a reality of life that things don't always go as planned. In the words of Seneca, fortune behaves as it pleases. His exile by the emperor and the interruption of his political career due to health issues were examples from his own life. He was able to get back, but when he did, it happened to him once more. The only thing that was in Seneca's hands was how he chose to see those events and what he chose to do with them. Nearly everything else was beyond his control. He made the decision to use them and to view them favorably. You will encounter both good and bad circumstances in life. It is up to you to choose how to respond to them, whether to look for the good in all that occurs or to dwell on regret. Rule 9. Talk till you're dead. After losing all of his money, Zeno of Sidium, the creator of Stoicism, went to the Oracle to get advice on what to do going forward. To live a decent life, the Oracle advised him, you must talk to the dead. The Oracle was making a reading-related reference when he encouraged Zeno to peruse the writings of earlier philosophers. Reading is a wonderful skill that allows you to read the ideas and viewpoints of people who lived thousands of years ago. We always seek for the most recent developments in our world, which causes us to lose sight of the past. There is nothing wrong with the latest innovations, but we must not disregard the wealth of important information contained in books. We have the ability to communicate with the greatest brains in history who can mentor and assist us in our lives through their experience. The worst part is that this superpower is being rejected by millions of people around the world. Take advantage of this. Access to as much ancient knowledge has never been easier than it is right now, owing to the Internet. Rule 10. Be harsh on yourself while being understanding to others. It is crucial to keep in mind that the Stoics adhere to stringent rules, whereas we have strong beliefs about what is right and wrong. But, and this is a significant but, we must have compassion for and forgiveness for people who have, in the words of Marcus Aurelius, turned away from the truth. Your standards are for you. 
This is not to mean that we should tolerate unfair or evil behavior, but we also shouldn't hold everyone accountable for not doing exactly how we would like them to. The best thing we can do in this situation is to set an example. Strive to act correctly and demonstrate to someone that they are acting incorrectly if you want them to change their behavior. This is the most effective technique to influence someone and shift their perspective. Though it could take some time, they will eventually begin to mimic you. Rule 11. Keep in mind that you pass away every day. Seneca once said, Our greatest error is to believe that we look forward to death. Death has largely already ended. The property of death is all of the past time. It is simple to conceive of death as something distant. We perceive it as an occurrence that occurs to us at some time in life and as something stationary, regardless of the precise day on which it will take place. Depending on our age and health, we approach it slowly or swiftly every day. Seneca believed that this was an incorrect perspective on death, one that resulted in a lot of ill behaviors and a poor existence. On the contrary, he claimed that we were all currently going through the process of dying. In fact, as you view this video, people are dying all throughout the world. You are losing time that you can never get back. According to him, death owns that time. Death is present right now. It is the second hand of the clock and the sunset, not some distant concept. Death continues to claim at every minute that has passed as the arrow of time travels. What are we to do in response? The best course of action is to enjoy life to the fullest. Finish whatever you start, avoid procrastination, and make the most of your time while it is still yours. How do you feel about these stoic precepts? Do you have any more to add? I'm interested in reading your feedback in the comments. I personally try to live by these rules, but it's difficult and one frequently forgets. I make an effort to remember it by recording it somewhere. Similar to life, Stoicism is not an easy path. It demands a lot of discipline and effort. Still, it's worthwhile. I'll see you later.